Okay, so this is chapter one notes, and we are going to start off by just learning some basics about stats. One of the most important things that you're going to have to know is context, um, and part of the reason is, is you're going to have to answer your questions using context so that somebody reads it and they know exactly what's going on. Context is explained by finding the who, the what, the when, the where, the why, and the how. Um, a lot of times we're going to call it the W's. I know how, don't start with a W, but it has a W in it, so it works. Um, these are the six things you always want to try and have, but you can't always have them. The two that you must have are the who and the what. Those are the musts. So you may not be able to find these other things, but you have to determine who the who is and the what. Okay? So when we look at information about it, the first thing we have is a case. A case is the whom or which we record in, oh, that's too big, hold on. <laughs> Chose the wrong marker. Information about, okay? So the who, this is the who. Who are we looking into? Who are we collecting data about? Um, so those are called the cases. So if you've done a survey before, you are the who. They're collecting data about you. Okay, so there's three different types. The first one is a respondents. Respondents are people. So if people do a survey, they are called respondents. The next one is subjects or participants. Oh, and we should say this is for surveys only. Subjects or participants are also people, but these are things for experiments. Later on in the year, we'll be doing some experiments and you guys will participate. So you will be the subjects or the participant. Experimental units, these are not people. People do not like to be called a unit, okay? And so these are things like bacteria, uh, maybe plants, animals, and experimental units, they can't answer surveys. These are all about experiments. So you have to make sure that you're able to keep those four different words kind of separate and know what they work for and when they work, okay? The next thing we have is a variable. And variables are the what's. This is the characteristic that's recorded about each case. So at the beginning of the year, we do a survey and I ask you, I think I ask you what gender you prefer. I ask you what your GPA is. I ask you what your height is, maybe what your shoe size is, what kind of phone you use. Those are all variables. I collect all this information about you and everything that I collect about you is a variable. Now, when we look at this, there are two types of variables. There are categorical, and quantitative. I believe I've heard some people call categorical qualitative, uh, but we don't really use that in stats. The stats word I want you to get used to using is categorical. And that brings up another thing. There's going to be words that you use um, sometimes because you've used it in another class. In stats, you can only use the word correlation a very specific time. You can only use some words a certain way. So you have to be careful of that and you got to really know your uh, vocabulary. Okay, so Categorical variables are things that work as counts or percents. So I ask you a question and you fit inside of a, uh, of a category. So I ask you your favorite type of ice cream, you're going to fit inside of a category. I ask you what color hair you are, you're going to fit inside of a category. And so these are things like gender, you fit in some kind of category. Um, and then this one's a tricky one. GPA can be categorical if we put you in a range. So, for example, I say that you have a, you select which range of a GPA you're in, then that means that you're going to fit into a category. If I ask you what your GPA is and you just tell me a number, that actually turns it into a quantitative. So whenever you can have categories, that is going to be a categorical variable. All right, so quantitative variables, these are things that are measurements. 
It is important when you have quantitative variables, you need to explain what the unit is that they're measuring in. Um, if you know it. A lot of times they're going to know it, but sometimes they won't. Uh, but if they're talking about something uh, quantitative, so your height, I need to know if you're talking about your height in inches or in centimeters. So you have to make sure that you say what unit it is. Okay, so height is an example. Shoe size. GPA, if it's just the number. Oops. Yeah, just number. Okay, so the first section that we're kind of learning for chapter one is just talking about identifying context of problems and then identifying what type of variable it is. It sounds easy, but when we get into some problems, you're actually going to realize that it is a little tricky. Okay, so let's see if I can scroll. Okay, so I have two different, two different graphs. I have one that's a table, and then I have one that's an actual graph. And what we need to do is we need to identify the context. So the who, okay? So remember, the who is who you're surveying, okay? If you look at this, it looks like they surveyed teenagers, right? The what? What are the questions they asked them? Well, they asked them a couple questions. They asked them if they own computer or tablet. And then you do need to say what kind of variable that is. That's a categorical variable. Uh, they had to ask them what their age was because otherwise they wouldn't know how to group them. So age. Now, we don't know if they asked them the age and then they put them in groups or if they asked, do you belong in this group from 12 to 13 or 14 to 17? So um, either one would kind of work. I would say mostly age is going to be quantitative and that the units is years. They didn't ask them how old they were in months. Once you hit two months old, you don't do that anymore. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this arrow, actually. Oops, okay, that's the right one. And then the third thing they asked them, they had to ask them what their gender was because that's the only way they could get all of this information because they found out about computers, tablets, age, and gender. And that's a categorical one. Okay, so again, these are the two that are the most important. You must have the who and what. Now we have to look for the others. Okay, so who, what, we have to ask for when. Okay, when, there's really not any information here. We don't know. You don't say not applicable, because it is applicable, but we just don't know. So we say unknown. And then who, what, when, where. Uh, we have no idea. It doesn't say, so unknown. And this is going to happen. I will tell you for where's, if you see something that's called a Gallup poll, or there's a couple other ones, those are tech, you tend to be U.S. polls. And so you have to recognize whether it's a service that's done in the United States, and then you would probably say U.S. unless it says something else. But we'll do practice problems so you see. Who, what, when, where, why. Okay, why you can find out. So the why, why would you collect a survey like this? Well, you're trying to see if, is there a difference in tablet or computer ownership by age and gender? That's what they're doing. They're looking for that. I should highlight these two. So who, what, when, where, why, and then the how. I'm kind of squeeze this over here. The only way you can really find out this stuff is they probably had to do some kind of survey. Sometimes it's going to be specific, but sometimes you won't know. But something like this, these are things that you would ask people. You're not doing an experiment. You're asking people these questions. Okay. All right, so let's look at the next one. The next one is a graph, still same idea. Ooh. So, let's see, it's this one. So who, okay? So perceptions that racism against blacks is widespread, and they have percent in the US, they have percent blacks, percent whites. We don't know the age, but we do know that it's, it's US. So we're gonna say 
Americans. And that's a good enough who. That's who they surveyed. It's probably American adults. Oh, that got a little bigger. Hold on. Okay. It's probably American adults. So we're going to just say Americans or American adults. Uh, let's see, where? Well, it had to be in the U.S. Oh, I, I skipped one. I knew I skipped one. Who, what, what? Okay. So this is the other one they have to have. The what is they ask them the perception um, if they believe racism is an issue again. Is, excuse me. Do you believe race, racism is an issue for blacks? So opinion. an issue against black Americans, okay? And the wording's kind of off, but that's okay. Um, and so the who, what, the when, we can kind of see the when. It started in 2008 and it went to 2006. So the when, um, the when is gonna be from 2008 to 2016. The where, who, what, when, where. Where, because it says U.S. is going to be in the U.S. Who, what, when, where, why. Um, so that people can see the difference in people's opinion. See difference in opinion. Oops, I didn't spell opinion right. Look at that. Slowly erase for blacks and whites. And if you notice, this is a big difference. It's like a 20 or 30 spread point the whole way. So even if you may not agree that there's a difference, people believe, and you can't really change what people believe. So people actually believe that there is a difference. And then the how, the how is, um, this is Gallup. Gallup is a, uh, one of the big survey companies in the United States. So this is a survey. Okay. So you have to be able to identify the who, what, when, where, why. And um, I didn't talk about the categories or quantitative for this what. I forgot about that. So it's the opinion if racism is an issue against blacks. This is not a measurement. This is either a yes or a no. So this is a categorical. Okay. So the first chapter, you're identifying context and you're going, then you're identifying the type of characters or type of um, variables.